time now. It's dads, lads, and kebabs. Welcome to another show of dads, lads, and kebabs, people. Welcome to another show. Mickey, you're in your dressing gown. What the fuck? No, I've been a very busy boy. I least said hard boy then, but that might sound very strange. Sounds a bit fishy there, mate. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. My new job is taken out of me physically, and I am fucked every day. Yes, I'm Good. on OnlyFans, doing that all day long, all these women. <coughs> no, not really. <laughs> you dirty people. Yes. You so, wish, yeah. motherfucker. I don't wish. That's disgusting. Once a year is fine by me. And uh, <laughs> what a start to the show, eh? Yeah, I am good. I am very tired. Physically draining my new job is, but it's good. I'm out in the fresh air, the openness. I get to hear the birds in the morning at seven o'clock and they're talking to me. They're saying, Mickey, go sit down and have a coffee. And I'm like, okay, birds. <laughs> Think about how nice that's going to be, though, when, you know, it's sort of late may early june you're rolling into work with a coffee the birds are singing sun's just hitting in the right spot lovely just, day yeah. lovely day lovely that's day. my favorite that's my favorite part of summer when you when you wake up early and you hear nothing just a little bit of bird song a little bit of coffee just <laughs> nice. you hear coffee the machine oh. when it goes be oh. joking so, as soon as as soon as i wake up in the morning my body is going, you're awake now. It's time. It is time. Time for the drink. Cough. Coffee. Cough. <laughs> <laughs> Although I'll tell you what, so I ran out, I ran out of coffee the past couple of days. And I've been like, because I got, so I've got loads of coffee for Christmas, all different stuff. And I thought I'm going to use it before I start buying more. Because otherwise it sits in the cupboard and I don't use it's it. stale, yeah. I just top up my regular stuff. So I haven't bought any for a while now, since Christmas. And I thought I'll use, because I've got loads of coffee for so Christmas, loads of filter coffee. Anyway, I used it up. And this morning I went down and was like, oh shit. I've got zero coffee. But instant. I've got, I've got, I had a zero in the cupboard. No, that's the best coffee ever made. It's not. It's it not. Is. Fucking Lavasa it... lover. No, it's, it's not because I, I have Cut different noir. coffees. Huh? Can't, no, no, I have all, I have filter coffee. I have beans, don't I? So I, I have beans. Oh, I have beans, breeze. man! You like your beans? Flicking and his bean? Have... No, flicks fuck. his own bean. <laughs> if you honestly, if you're a coffee lover, like a proper coffee lover, and you like proper fresh coffee, then you'll get what I'm saying. Yeah, but I don't have a machine, so there you but, go. Yeah, but your filter coffee machine, you can buy them for like 20 quid. Oh no, you can get the little things you put in your cup and you go, I've got one, shut up. <laughs> yeah, all one of the things, yeah. I don't know, you just one stick it over your cup and it fucking filters in and it's bitter like fuck. No, it's not hot. It is. Oh, mate, just telling you now, you've not, you've, you need to go on a bit of a coffee sabbatical. Good. What, never have coffee? No, no, not a sabbatical. Not yes, fucking... that means you stop doing what you're doing and you have a break from it. No, you need to go on a little journey. <laughs> it All does. Right. Okay, I'll let you have that one. Wrong word. <laughs> fucking hell. Semantics <laughs> with Mickey. Right. But you need to go on a little coffee journey. Okay. And just That's better. Ex experience just fresh coffee, man. Fucking love it. I am so summer ready. and I'm, I know. Are you drinking beer? No, my multivitamins. It's a bit late for that, mate. No, my piss will be fucking bright orange in the morning. Oh, that's a, a vitamin piss is always fucking bright orange. It's like it's like what? It's like it's the same colour as my yellow Crocs. <laughs> Does that make you think though that if you if it's that because obviously when you have a Barocca, especially in the morning, it's not Barocca. But carry on, we say this every time. Mean. Is it what is it, Audi version? No, it's Tesco multivitamins, and then the oh. vitamin C and zinc. Separates two All of them. Right. Two. Fuck. When you have a cough, we, we call fucking coffee on the <laughs> mind, man. When you have a vitamin and it flushes out in your piss. Yeah. 
do you think your body's got time for to pull all the good out of it before it's fucking flushed out? I always feel that it's not. I always feel like, oh, that's fucking it's, shit. I've just pissed all couple, that out. It's a couple of hours. Like, if I'd f- finished drinking that, within... If I had piss in, like, half hour, it'd still be normal colour. And then the hour mark, it'd start, start changing a bit. <laughs> and then probably two hours, it'll be luminous. Yeah. I, I, I love a Barocca, especially in the morning. Fucking do like a Barocca in the morning. Yeah. I'm going on this thing at the moment where basically... I don't know what I just said about the coffee, but... So I'm using everything that I've got rather did than you, buying a... Go on. Before you carry on, you know you had that issue with that posh company that delivers Christmas presents. Mm. Did did you did you keep that coffee? That, uh, was it the Christmas blend that you wanted to give us presents, but obviously it was all fucked, wasn't it? Oh, what are you talking about? Don't okay. Mm. Okay, mm. that... that that went to a gift person. Thank you. Carry on. It, yeah, you it went to the needy. Covered. It went to the needy. Yes, I did. I drink. I drank it all. It's fucking lovely. Really nice. Good. Love coffee, man. So yeah, I'm using everything. So I said this to you before <laughs> Christmas. I get loads of sh- I get loads of shit. I get loads of fucking toiletries that I never use. So yeah, I got a drawer uh, for uh, them. That's so why I'm using it. I'm not buying anything else. I'm, I'm all my Christmas coffees, all the fucking. I'm we're still on Christmas like treats because we don't eat the treats, mm. so we've still got a fucking box full of Christmas bakes and cookies and no all sorts, all the fucking bad shit. I've still got Christmas buffet food in the freezer. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, I said to the, said to the wife, I said, listen, we're gonna fucking, we're gonna start living off what we've got around us. That just makes sense now. It makes sense to empty your all the shit in your house. Oh, so much fun! Because then you're just gonna—it's just gonna, like you say, it's gonna be thrown away. It's gonna go to waste. It's gonna go off. Gonna well, I don't. Away. I don't bin it. You see, he looks like, like toilet four tr- years. <laughs> yeah, toiletries. <laughs> I've got toiletries coming out my fucking ears. Like I've got toiletries. I have to stash them in here in the office. Like, I've got a drawer full of toiletries. Just because. Because he does. My sure in my bed. Because I live in a bedroom. I mean, <laughs> it's. it's Your room just literally looks like everything. It's, it has, it's, it's it has to be. It's, I have to. Uh, it's got all the colours. That's never. I love, the fact, I love the fact that you're sat in your. Uh, dressing gown just like yeah but, oh yeah getting back <laughs> get back to that story i i come home out of the shower and uh for fuck it I'm going to bed soon because i'm really tired i keep going to bed before 10 and i've never ever done that on a weekday Love it's it. crazy my body just like suck it shuts it hits nine o'clock and it goes hey, like a robot turn the power off body just drains itself how do you feel after a weekend now like when you have a whole weekend off work, do you feel refreshed? It depends what I've been doing, to be fair. Mm. Um, yeah, if I you're feel... out filming and stuff, or... Oh, yeah, that's going to fuck up my sleep, so I'll probably just feel like shit, like last weekend. <laughs> so, I just carried it on last week. It was Saturday night at Hellfire Caves, and then uh, it just carried on, really. For the... I was tired when I went to bed Sunday, and then, yeah, I was just up It's just a week, week, though. Yeah, maybe maybe Saturday you need to have a lay in. Yeah, I will do this week. Yeah, the fact that I used to have a week of lates in my old job, that was really good. Getting up at like nine o'clock, half eight, nine every day, just an extra hour and a half or so, two hours. Just, every, but that's every day though. So if you put it over a week, that's like ten to fifteen hours extra sleep a week. Wasted. Like, that's well, no, it's not wasted. Wasted. Because I'm old and I need I need the help. Do you though? I do you do. just gotta keep going? You can't keep going. I know you can sleep when you're dead, but then I'd put myself in the ground. <laughs> you dig in your own grave, literally. L- literally. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. You know what I saw today on my break? What did you see work? today? 
I saw a video on on X or Twitter. This girl, 17 year old girl, she was running down or walking down like a, a highway, and she stopped a police car. It may be 10, 11 o'clock at night. This bloke was just about to finish his shift. This policeman, and she pulls over. Or she pulls him over, and she said that I need your help. My brothers and sisters are being held captive by my parents. And he, it was a bit unsure whether to believe her at first because she was she was talking in a weird way, like not very for like seventeen year old. Her vocabulary wasn't very good, and the way she was pronouncing her words wasn't the best. Now, basically, her parents. I think there was 12 kids in that house, including her, from the ages of 2 to 29. They were only allowed to shower once a year. They were kept, they were chained to beds with handcuffs and chains in their beds. They weren't allowed out of the house. They were mm -hmm. having one meal a day each. They were living in their own excrement and feces and all this and basically this bloke this policeman was thinking mm, maybe is this true maybe she's just had a row of her parents and i'll just take her back to the house and then she said i have pictures to prove it she's got she had pictures on her phone that she struggled to use by the way so how she got a phone i don't know and she showed pictures of her i think brothers or sisters chained in handcuffs to the bed and obviously this he's thinking do not do he said to her do not delete these pictures we need these he called up for backup and he went down to the house left her in the car yeah and the the stuff was atrocious it, what they found in the house it's like fucking hell i, I presume it's america it's probably america yeah um, and they got mum and dad are in court they look the mum looked normal to be fair not that that matters but the dad looked like a sucked in Jimmy Savile lookalike with big seventies hair. You know, like a bob, a female bob. This is this man oh. had that with a fringe. And he was very gaunt looking. He's very strange looking man. Well they both got twenty five years. That's when they're next up for parole. So uh I don't know what's happened to the kids. I didn't oh, get do see that. Why is there so many of these stories about like, like if kids, you look at man. if you if you look at Netflix, there's a whole row it's of fucking stories, fucking... And documentaries. That'll be like, the next the new, one, I tell you. The new one, there's a new one about stalkers. There's one about stalkers. There's one about the perfect family. There's all fucking. There's all like just documentaries, and people love them. Don't get me wrong, people fucking love them. I remember there was one. Do you remember the one last? Was it last year? I think it was where it was a college house. Sorry. There was a, it was like a student house in America, and basically it was like four girls and a guy living together. And the young lad that was never suspected actually did it and just drove off, but he he basically killed everybody in the house. Oh wow! It was it was a big story, man. Oh man, it fucking freaks me out. <clears throat> but I don't know. This is where I love America, but. This is where I think, what what goes on, what goes on up here? To think, just to everything gets blown out of proportion in that country. Everything's, and I'm not saying our fucking country's perfect because it's fucking not. Oh, it's shit. There's even worse. <laughs> like, do you see the thing yesterday with the uh, so the the Super Bowl winners had a like, well, we have a football parade, a Champions League parade or whatever. Yeah, they had a parade. I did that. Basically, yeah, yeah. They, um, <clears throat> three three gunmen opened up in the grounds of hundreds of thousands of people. I bet there were forty nine fans, weren't they? Forty nine fans because they cheesed one, didn't they? It's not. It's it's not come out yet. It's not come out what it was. But it was, there were three arrests made. There were, I think, three people killed. Lots of people injured. And I mean, it's all over. Like these fans. Like that's scattered proper. Do you know when, like, when a gun goes off and people just? Do you know what though? Just... If it's in big crowds of like a parade, <clears throat> you're gonna hit so many people in a very very short space. If you're opening yeah, fire, look at them. Um... They can't go anywhere. They're just stuck, getting shot. Do you remember? Do you remember the Boston Marathon? Yeah, the bombing. There's a documentary and a film on Netflix about that. Yeah, 
yeah, that, that, so yeah, the Boston thing was just, he's just thinking, you don't know where you're going or what you're doing or, you know, you go on a plan the day out and you think it's the most perfect day and then that's when it happens. That is what it is. Don't go to big cities. Don't go to big events. Don't go to big places. Stay in your house. Drive it's a fear, isn't it? And then it's go definitely a, again. It's a fear that people carry with them. Especially I always think when it that comes... whenever I go to London, because I hate London. Mm. I, I don't like London at all. Horrible place. Um, some of the places there are nice. But in general, the people as a whole, it's not a very... I think, it's, I think that's the same with I, a lot of big... I always worry at the fact like that when you're... New York. Yeah, well, when you're in London, if anything did happen, that's where it would be. How quick can you get out? You, yeah. it's, it's, it's a struggle, right? If you, in, unless you're in your own vehicle, oh, I'd yeah, imagine, ev- rely on imagine everything, everything would stop. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to get out. Like when um, I can't remember what it was. When was it? I was in Alderwood Underground Station, train station where they filmed the Prodigy, Firestar and Harry Potter underground doing a ghost hunt. It was Friday the 13th one year. And I came out and there was police sirens everywhere. And this was this was like two in the morning thinking, fuck, you know, what's all this? What's going on? And then we started Googling stuff, like looked at the news and that. And that was when the, um, the Paris machine gunners were going around Paris shooting people yes. and, what, and we're, yes. we're in London thinking fuck are they doing it here as well as Paris and we're thinking fuck me we need to go find our car now because we weren't parked near the the train state the tube station we had to go we had to walk like 20 minutes we think fuck you know walk down the old embankment the old bank area mm. and so like, fuck you know just let's just go quick and we were, we drove through Camden trying to get out and it's like, put your foot down. We need to get out because we didn't know if it was going to happen there. There was just police everywhere, and it, that's that my, um, I was really scared then actually, and nothing happened. My, but I didn't think that at the time. My brother, he was in central Paris the night that happened. Wow. He was coming back that night, and I remember ringing him, ringing him, ringing him, just fucking non-stop ringing him. Couldn't get through. And um, and when it when eventually did he come home, he come home, he got got in the house at like three in the morning or whatever. Literally was like fucking out. I was like, "Is it you all right? Is everything okay?" And he's like, "It's like yeah." I think he was just saying it was mental. It was absolutely. He was nowhere near it. He was nowhere near the place. Paris is big, but yeah. But he was in he was staying in Central, so you know. But he said the whole place was just manic. Fuck. Right. Again. A concert, like you just think, you know, I've been to a few concerts this year, just gone, and I just think any of those concerts, like you're talking Manchester, like, oh, man. yeah, but you're talking when you're in a concert arena, you're talking 13, 14, 15,000 people, yeah, all, try, all, trying to, all trying to run, all trying to run at the same time. What are you best doing, standing still, or are you best off trying to run like everybody else? I think. Your your brain tells you to get out there as soon as you can, fight or flight. And then, but you probably if you think, oh, I'm just going to stand there and do nothing. They might walk in, and there might be another bomb, and I might be dead. And why didn't I get out of there? So yeah, it, there's lots of ways to look at it, but you do want to get your natural instinct is to remove yourself as quick as possible from the the uh, the threat, and that's what you do. I just feel like we live, and I get it, some of the times that people have had before have been really unpredictable times, but I just feel like now we live in such unpredictable times that it's so hard just to think, do you enjoy life? Do you worry? Do you fucking think about it? one day you're going to have to hunker down in your house? All these things. Just make you think, what kind of life do you want to live? And I'm, I'm all selfish me just thinking, I just want summer to come around so I can... Stand in the garden and drink my coffee <laughs> in my flip flops. <laughs> I just want to hang my washing out. <laughs> um, it's funny though, isn't it? It's, it's, it's the simple things in life that actually do mean the most. Yeah, of course it for do. me that that that's everything for me. Just the the nice crisp mornings of just fucking love it. 
Yeah, that's why I love autumn. Autumn's the best I am time. Autumn, yeah. So summer, autumn for me. Well, no, because I love all seasons, really. I'm not a fan of this part, though. This part for me. The wet bit. Between the wet bit. <laughs> I like the wet bit. The wet bit. <laughs> It is just, mate, fucking rain rowing lately as well. There's so much of it. I know, I'm out in it eight and a half hours a day. Hey, <laughs> look at you. Hey, I'm on graft now. I'm a graft, you know. I'm out in it eight hours a day. <laughs> oh, mate. You, I bet you're going to start drinking, like, fucking IPA or some ale. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't drink beer. I don't drink alcohol, like a, really. A pint of spit. I'll have a pint of spitfire, please. <laughs> That's yeah. shit. The ones that come out of pumps. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you, oh, mate. I think they can, they can keep them. Yeah, not for you me. Keep, you can keep your ale. <laughs> you can keep your ale. Shove them up your ass with your Yorkshire tea. Yorkshire. Oh, Fucking mate. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, come on, tell me, what have you got in the tank? What's, what's, what have you got to look forward to? Have you got any, have you got any plans this year? I do. I've got a meeting on. I've got a meeting on Tuesday. A secret meeting about about stuff from my past that I used to do that could possibly be back on again. So yeah. Ooh. <laughs> what like that sort of stuff? Slapping my wrist. No, your your wrist. Yeah, but not with that team. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> definitely not. I was thinking. Then I was thinking. Oh, no. getting out. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, no. What? What? What's the thing that's behind my laptop that I always talk about? Mm. And ooh, so, who knows? Who knows, yeah. people? You'll be having to queue up and meet Mickey soon. He'll be doing Q and A's. He'll be too busy for this podcast. He'll be earning loads of money. He'll be in it. He'll be rolling in it. He'll be in he's it going to the it. he's going to the Bahamas in June for a month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish. But yeah, oh, so that's man. that come out of the blue. Um, so yeah, looking forward to that. See what mm -hmm. I say. See what's going to come from it. Um, what else have I got? I have Ghost Hunt coming up soon with Mark and Rich, West London Paranormal. Some underground tunnels. Big up, big up the boys, West London Paranormal. Yeah, I, I, I missed, I missed the last show with them, you didn't I? Missed they, they I did, in fact, I didn't even miss it. I didn't even miss it. I just completely forgot all about it. If it was the next so, day. Mark and Rich, I'm sorry for being so rude, but <laughs> can we have you back on the show just so we can have the actual ch have Shout the chat? I've not, I've not had the pleasure to speak to the boys yet. Oh, they're awesome boys, they are. So, Mark and Rich, come back on the show. Yeah. We'll if you do, I'll, ma I'll make sure I'm present at this. They don't, do, they don't do podcasts normally, but they do this one. So. Hey, we've got people queuing up. Yeah, we have, we just don't let them on. <laughs> <laughs> we we supposed to have a few celebs coming on soon. Yeah, soon. I'm telling you, Anthony Joshua, people watch out. Tyson Fury, Jennifer hey. Aniston, you know all them. Exactly. All ready to go. Just got um, to pay him the million pounds. <laughs> get to get on it. Hey, listen, you pay him, and then I'll sort. I'll pay you back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good idea. Yeah. Okay, no. Do you think people? Do you think celebs actually want a fee? For going on podcasts, um, I suppose it depends who. I've not are. heard of it. It depends what podcast they're on. If they know they'll benefit from it, <coughs> um, then like, yeah. I've never. That's a road I've never looked down. Like like Joe Rogan, for example, he has everybody and everybody. He will go from having a guy like you and me. Say if you have, say you know, your your expertise, and he was into it at the time. He yeah, pulled he you would. on his show. He would just he would simply do it just for the fact that he likes your expertise. You know, he's into all UFOs, Area 51, and that sort of stuff, conspiracy side things. So he'll just have somebody who's got a following on his show. I think but, that when 
obviously depending on who you are you got your time is your work so these people that go on these shows that are not necessarily mainstream media <laughs> like tv film musicians singers all that they they would they would probably have to be paid but like you ain't getting I don't know, Denzel Washington on your podcast, I really. Unless he knows you, blah, blah, blah. But then you've also got the the influencers that are on reality shows, YouTube, Instagram, all them. Now, they're the ones that charge you money, definitely, because they only do anything for payment. They'll do anything. Oh, yeah. Payment, payment or goods, normally, isn't it? Yeah, I remember one time, um, shall I say who it was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were trying to back in the day. We were trying to work with uh, Aaron Craskell. You know the the funny ginger bull little yeah, little, yeah. Man, little man. Yeah, do his little funny skits and that. Some of them quite good. Well, we 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 were speaking to his agent, trying to get him to do a ghost hunt and some bits and bobs of us. And we didn't even get down to the ghost hunt. It was just like an Instagram post. How much do you think an Instagram post was that he would put up himself, maybe a picture or whatever? How much do at you his, think? At his prime. At yeah, his you, most high talk, end. You're, to, you're talking eight years sort ago. Of, oh, so, sort of between Vine and Facebook at the time then. After Vine? Oh, Vine had finished, yeah. yeah it was Vine had finished, yeah. Definitely Instagram, when Instagram was normal, before TikTok anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, before TikTok. Um, so everything just, was Facebook or Instagram video, wasn't it? Type? Yeah, yeah. So how oh, much do you reckon a, a single post was to put up? It's going to say, I don't know, 500 quid, I guess. Keep going. A grand. Keep going. Fuck off, you ain't worth any more than that. Two grand. Keep going. Fuck off, five You're, grand. You are way off. Keep going. 20 grand. Keep going. 30 grand. Yes. 30 <laughs> grand. Well, he had like 8 million followers on Facebook at the time. How many products has he, how many adverts has he ever done? None. I don't know. It wasn't an advert, just None. a post and stuff, you know. And yeah, that's, that's what we were talking 30 grand, you greedy bastard. 30 yeah. grand. Yeah. And how, right, let's be honest, we've, we've had engagement with people that we've followed over the years, their journeys, yeah. and Steve-O, have, shout out from Steve-O, or so, he's posted us as well, he's, yeah, he's he um, has, yeah. shared us, yeah. how much? Nothing. Nothing, just just a thank you, an appreciation post, that was it, nothing. Yeah. Again, shout out back to Steve-O. He's a supporter of his supporters. Exactly. Spartans. Salute. You wonder, you, you wonder why people like him are still going. Exactly. Because the fan base has been loyal to, to they, obviously him and he's loyal to his fans. They watched him grow up, go through hard times, go through good times. You know. And he knows I know, what I, like. I love his... He, exactly. He knows what it was like trying to build that journey. Mm-hmm. He, he really knows, you know. But then, oh my God, if you... Sometimes it's about the experience though, right? Like, you, some people want some people want their story read. Some people feel like their story is worth a lot of money. And I get it. Like, you know, if you're putting your entire story on a podcast, but yet you've got a massive following that you could sell that story via book, podcast, private show, fucking mm. whatever you want to do, like, then yeah, okay, you're going to make money. But Who would you want, if you could have two people as guests in the future, who would you have? Don't have to be famous, but we need to know who they are, basically. You can't say Mavis down the road, because we don't know who fuck Mavis is. But... Is she good? Mavis. <laughs> you watching? <laughs> <laughs> oh fucking no! Now you just put me on a fucking pedestal, man. Um, I haven't. You're not up there yet, Niall. You're not up there yet. 
No, but you've put me on a... A spot. On a spot, because a for zit. me... A white past <laughs> zit. Oh, I'd want somebody. I'd want two ends. I'd want the higher end. Mm. And I'd want not what what I class to be. Who would I want? Fuck me. Because I'd want somebody... I want, I'd want a dad that's really relatable. Mm. Like... One thing that we haven't done yet. So, yeah, so... Oh, God, right. Let me just say my name. So, I'd like to have... Oh, Maybe fuck. someone you someone you watch, someone you like, yeah. they, what they do. Maybe a musician. Maybe so, I'd like to have... Traveller. I'd, like, I'd like to have somebody called Joey Diaz. Okay. Do you know, do you know who Joey Diaz is? No. He's a bad motherfucker, man. So Joey Diaz is a stand-up comedian. However, he's, he's, his life was... He was the fat dude in The Longest Yard. Remember the film with... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He yeah. started... He, he's got two... He's got two very small appearances in movies. He was on the, he was on the train in the Spider-Man movie. And he was... Oh, was he? he was in The Longest Yard. Yeah. But his life is so much more. He's a stand-up comedian and... He has been through one hell of a life. And I mean, he's got, so shout out to this on Apple. He's got a thing called, oh, fucking hell. Oh, I'm going to have to find it and send it to you. But just listen to it. I'll send it to you. I got my brother to listen to it. He's never stopped listening to it since. But he, he's got a podcast. Um, he's on everybody's show. He's always on Joe Rogan and all that. Yeah. But he, he's not a money guy. He's not, no. he's not made millions. But he's got a lot of big friends that love him because he's just a great guy. His energy is fucking electric. Absolutely electric. He lost his parents at a young age, but he's had a shit life to begin with. He went to jail. He was in prison. Oh, my God. Uh, he's just great. Great guy all around. I think he makes me very emotional because he lives just such a fucking great testicle testaments, it's called. Oh my god! So, Joey Diaz, testicle testaments. If you've not listened to it and you want something just to listen to that's going to make you laugh, cry, and really think, it's got five parts to it and it's about five hours long. Joey Diaz, testicle testaments on Apple Music. Go and fucking check it out. So yeah, him, him as my top one to go for. And then, do you know who I'd really like? And I've got a new, a lot of new found respect respect for him is. Um, do you remember the, do you know the geezer was on a podcast? He was on he was on a podcast recently, but he was on Towie. And I just see him in the so Kirk Norcross. Oh Kirk, yeah. Oh yeah, I wanna watch that. I keep seeing clips on TikTok. That about how they podcast, how they did how they filmed um Towie and his pod, dad and stuff. Everything. That podcast literally again took me through every single emotion under the sun because it was so raw. Mm. so raw pulled it right back and i just yeah i proper new re found respect for somebody that can and he's and not only that like he's really changed his life yeah. from what he was and what happened his, to him his and everything dad else. died didn't he yeah yeah, yeah and go and watch it kept burning down go and watch it yeah. again another show with a lot of new found respect for kirk because i just i was like what a guy what a fucking guy. Yeah, he wasn't in it um, long. Howie. Um, but he'd done a lot. He, he was he was young. Like, do you know what I mean? He just lived a life. He was young. Like yeah. a clock as all, man. Young, dumb, full of cum. And I'm not making... He's just got a fucking... My own. Like, <laughs> my own semen. Well, you shoot your... I shoot your lot in you. Shoot your lot in the yeah, floor. <laughs> Quite possibly the best comedic oh, moment of a film. It was it was beautiful. We climbed next to Saint time. <laughs> Wait a minute. How you do that? <laughs> Me, my sperm, my sperm. No, my, my balls. My, my, my sperms, my barrels. <laughs> uh, oh god. Over two. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yes. But so, yeah. So I'd like Kirk Norcross as as a as a somebody that I could really relate to. Yeah. And Joey Diaz. Because he's just so he holds a place for me. I'm just like, 
he means a lot in everything he says. He's very motivational as well. He's got yeah. all, he's all over TikTok as well, doing a lot of motivational stuff. Yeah, but... yeah, yeah. Yeah, who are yours? I have three because I'm naughty. Okay, get on. get a third one then. Now, come on. You say yours, and I'll think about my third. Right, first one, Andrew Tate. Obvious reasons, never gonna get in, but you know that's a world changer having Andrew Tate on a podcast. Um, we spoke about him the other week, didn't we? I would, as we've also said, I would love Steve-O to come on just to chat about his journey, go through his life, because that's, we, like I said, we both grew up watching him on Snapchat back in the day, and he's still going, and he's still killing it, so definitely him, and I would also like to have Dapper Laughs on, the shit that he's been through. Yes. From yes. from comedian getting cancelled by ITV from a joke that every comedian makes every single night of the year. They cancelled him. There was an agenda against him. He came back. He, I think he was very involved in a film that came out. I can't remember what the film was. Like a, a vampire prison film. Quite a few uh, reality stars were in that. Um, yeah. And then... Obviously, he had a he, he settled down, had a family. I think he's got like two kids, three kids now. Three, two, I think now. Three kids now. So he's, a, he's two on the, one on the way, I think. Yeah. Yeah. F- proper family man, still doing his little um, skits, his little, as it were. Skits, comedic things, and he's just started his his tour, isn't he? His comedy tour that he planned last year, and it sold out last year as well, a year in advance for every every single night. So, talk about a good turnaround. He went from six seconds sex secrets, wasn't it? Sex tips or something? I can't remember. Yeah, that's what Dapper used to do. That's why I used to see him on Vine. And um, Vine was Vine was brilliant. He he uh, killed Vine. He, he literally he killed, killed it. Vine. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I think from him emotionally, he was he also stopped drinking, didn't he? he stopped taking drugs. He's I think he's sober now. He's clean for everything. I think. Yeah, so he's, he's full on sober. Yeah, full sober. Yeah, he, yeah. He's gone through all the demons that life will give you, and come out the other side. So I think that'd be a very good. And the fact he's a dad, and he could help a lot of people because he's always going on about mental health and trying to help people. And I think he'd be a wicked guest. I would love to. Yeah, I'd love to he talk actually, about addiction. He actually, he actually follows me on Twitter. I might. I might send him a message. Send him on. He can only say no. <laughs> he can only say no. Yeah. Do you know what? These are the kind of guys, though, that at least they'd give you a second thought. I think so, yeah. They're not too, like, old, not too up their own if they're, if they're busy, they're busy. Do you know what I mean? <clears throat> they're not looking at numbers, not looking at what you can bring them. You know, you got to build you know what? a foundation first. My third, I've thought about it, and I've thought about it because if we're going back to that sort of time with like Dapper and stuff, I remember, so I would have Big Nasty on. Oh, yeah. Right, and, and the reason why... Was, we could have him and Steve-O together because they're good friends. Yes. Yeah, that'd be. Big, <laughs> Big Nasty for me would be... He brought a lot of comedy to my life when... I never, do you know what I mean? I struggled a bit. Yeah. Like I was young, fucking, you know, like you are. You're either, you're up and you're down. Do you know what I mean? But he but he used to he used to basically he had videos, and he had videos, and he was called he used to call himself Uncle Pain, all right. And he'd have videos from basically sitting in his car. He used to sit in his car, sit and smoke weed in his car with his mate, and basically listeners would send in stories now these i'm going to send you one after the video i'm going to send you one watch the story but basically these stories were fucking just like for example right the funniest one for me and i'll send it i can't i can't tell you because then i'm going to send you it but yes so anyway the stories were just way off the chart but they'd be serious stories from listeners like 
So last night, you know, I caught my uh, caught my girlfriend cheating, <laughs> and it, they, he would just give his advice, and his advice was just, just basically, just fucking funny. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm gonna send you it, but for me, he just brought a lot of comedy to my life when I, at the point when I really needed it, and that's when I got into comedy, and I got into I didn't just get into comedy for watching, like. You know, just the regular stand-ups we know as 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 Brits. I I just found different comedians and like how they like now. I'm so into different comics, and not just for their comedy, but for their life behind it. A big one from like I said, you know, I've always said about it. But Bert Kreischer for me was yeah. You I told me to watch his Netflix shows. I think I watched yes. four of them. They're really funny. Yes, <laughs> really funny. But he's done one. He did one with Joey Diaz, right? He's on a lot of podcasts with Jerry Diaz. Okay. So they, them two, are good. they're really good friends. So one of the stories for Burt Kreischer and Jerry Diaz that, so Burt Kreischer was having a dinner party at his house and another comedian, Ari Shafour, he's a very out there comedian who's got into a lot of trouble for posts and stuff. He's a very okay. loud, proud comedian. So Ari roofied Burt Kreischer, slips a roofie in his drink. Okay. Right, at a dinner party with his wife and kids there. That's what? Yeah. What, they had a massive bust up about it on a podcast and everything. Anyway, he roofied him at a dinner party. And Bert Crusher, he's not a massive, he's not a big drug taker. He's like a smoke of weed now and again, I guess. Not a big drug taker or anything like that. Anyway, he roofied him, mollied him, and basically went into a panic. Went into such a panic, hyperventilating everything. Right? First thing he thinks to do is to phone Joey Diaz. He says, Joey, Ari's just mollied me. I'm panicking. He says, I'll be there in five minutes. Pulls up to his house. <laughs> says, where's says, where's the drugs? Where's the roofies? Ari gives him the roofie. Joey necks it. And says, don't worry, mate. We're going we're gonna to ride through this together. <laughs> <laughs> and he oh, says, wow. they sat. He says, they literally sat in the garden, high as a kite. Panicking. tripping <laughs> and he was just he was just sat telling him stories all night because that's what joey does joey tells stories fuck i know i i know i recommend a lot of stuff to you but if you're ever in bed and you think i just want to listen to something listen to that testicle testaments please please listen to it if you honestly dad's out there dads if you're listening to, if you want to listen to something that's going to make you laugh and just think about your life go and listen to this bloke because he'll he'll put you through He'll put you through pain, but he'll also make you laugh as well. But yeah, so he took the other half of the molly, rode out the night with him. They didn't die. He calmed him down. But he was like, Joey's a bad motherfucker, man, for doing that. I love him, but I love their backstories as comedians. Yeah. Have you ever been to a stand-up show? Yes. I Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to Burt last year. Oh, did you? Yeah, I went to him in London last year to my brothers, because it was my little brother that introduced me to him. Okay. And basically, and this was when he was younger, and he did a show, he did a show, and he was in Amsterdam. He did a show in Amsterdam called Flying Dildos. He's normally in his pants, isn't he, on stage? No, he, no, he just takes his top off. He's in his oh, jeans. Just, just, yeah. Oh, he's got jeans. He's very, and he's, he's gone from being sort of mediocre to very, very high up. I mean, he was doing all the build-up to the Super Bowl and everything last week, so he's, oh, wow. he's got big. Um, but I love his backstory. I love the fact that he was just a normal guy, really, really trying to make it, really trying to make it. And when he stand up, when he tells his stand up, that is his life. He's a fucking yeah. idiot. <laughs> his life is his stand up. It's not. I guess he's. He's. I guess he's the American version. I don't even want to fucking compare. It cause it's not even different leagues. But I guess he's the American version of what we would have as, say, between Peter Kay and somebody else. See, I just don't, normal. I don't, I don't find Peter K funny. He was funny when I was younger. It was it was funny and relatable when I was younger, but not now. Yeah, the only the only people I sold my tickets. There's, there's three comedians that I used to like or still like for their stand up: Billy Connolly. I loved him. Jasper Carrot back in the day. Yeah. Because Jasper Carrot is the only comedian that never swore. 
Never said a swear word. And his stories were fucking awesome. And Jimmy Carr. I've seen Jimmy about four times. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I, fucking, I, don't... I fucking love Jimmy. He's... Oh, Lee, Lee Evans as well. Lee Evans, fucking he sweats like a motherfucker. I love Lee Evans. He's fucking quality. They're trying to get him back out of retirement, aren't they? At the moment. He won't do it. No, his, his wife wants him at home. <laughs> he won't do it. But yeah, those but yeah. four, for me, uh, all the ones... You know on like these shows on Dave, on the channel Dave, you have all these yeah. ta taskmasters and all these fucking comedians, yeah. all these women comedians and that. Who's that panel alien? shows. Yeah, the panel shows, all them comedians. Oh, fucking... Oh, I love him. Um, Gar Aramish, whatever his name is. Yeah, Ramish. Yeah, he's quite funny. The Indian geezer, he's quite funny. I quite like I fucking him. Fucking love him. Uh, I've seen well, a, Beckett, cause, them two together as well. They're funny. Because when I lived in my old house, I had Comedy Central, so it was always Friends or Stand Up, like last night, late night at the Apollo, whatever it is. Yeah, and yeah. And they yeah. used to have all the comedians on. Sometimes I watch it. Michael McIntyre is quite funny as well. I quite like him. But mm -hmm. yeah, all the all the panel show people and Dave, I don't think they're funny. Like. I don't know, I can't remember their names, man. but a lot of them, I just think, well, you're not funny. You're, your humour does not interest me. I like I like one-liners, I like fucking stories that make me fucking piss myself. Like, do you class Kevin Hart as a stand-up comedian now because he's doing Hollywood films? Because his shows are funny, stand-ups. Is he a comedian or is he a film star now? What I would say... Put him in. I yeah. So the thing is, when you when you look at those kinds of com comics that do a lot of half movies, half stand up, I would say there are they take him sort of from the yeah, but they're scene, don't they? They're also no, yeah, I know, but he doesn't know. He's he's work ethic. I don't. know, People can say what they want. Like are you you like him, right? You love him, you hate him, don't like his stuff. His work ethic is fucking insane. Have you seen the Netflix documentary about Kevin Hart? There's like five episodes. No. About the about the year that he got taken off the Oscars, you remember? He did a tweet about ten years before yeah. about yeah. about his cancel. Yeah, trying to cancel him, and he goes, "Well, I'm not going to apologise." I said, "Well, you, you're not going to be hosting the Oscars there," and that was his dream. And he said, "I don't, don't need to apologise." Like this was ten years ago. <laughs> it was. I'm not that same person now. I've already spoken about it like a few weeks ago. I'm not going to talk about it and apologize every time i see a microphone so they said people, oh, we'll take take it off you then people so just fuck. hold people, people just hold it hold it against you though do you know what i mean oh, they hold Rick, it and... ricky gervais as well i like ricky gervais he's funny see ricky gervais he has been for me he's one of them comics that he was very as a younger person i guess because i don't know maybe i wasn't as intellectual when i was younger because he was quite big when i was in my sort of early to late teens what the office so yes all that sort of stuff the office i was a lot, you know, a lot of people didn't like the office because they weren't sure what it was is this real is it fake they didn't it was, really it was, get it no but then that was he changed tv though he changed he the real he changed the realism of tv because yeah. a lot of people tried to a lot of people tried to mimic that and not okay. been very oh. successful at it. no it hasn't worked it's, for him has it it's very difficult to be a critic though, isn't it? When, like, when you see a TV program and you, you sort of, you you can be a critic if you like it or not. But when it comes to actually the material, like, you don't really have a leg to stand on. Like, cause you know, Rick, I could say, oh, I didn't think The Office was funny. And then Ricky Jace go, okay, let's see your, let's see your highlights. You know? Hey, <laughs> the fuck you. See, I, I prefer The Office <clears throat> to, to extras. I thought Exorcist was yeah, okay. I liked, I liked The Office. The Office was better. I liked everything that Ricky Chase ever done with Carl Pilkington. Carl Pilkington for Yeah, me. Idiot Abroad. That's fucking funny, man. See, that's the thing, right? I think Carl should do something because... He's wasted. Like, he could be an amazing yes. TV... He could be a celebrity. He, so he fucking doesn't want hard. it, though. He doesn't want it. He, he, You can just tell he's one of these people that he's like, listen... I appreciate it, and I'm glad that I've I've done everything that you've enjoyed. But nah, I'm, I'm all right. It's not for me. I don't think Such he wants. That. He doesn't want to go that one step higher. No, because he's. I love how dry he is. I love <laughs> he's it. Just like, natural, isn't he? I love Real. how I love how fucking dry he is, and just 
like raw with it like I'm not fucking doing it. I'm not fucking staying here. It's a shit hole. <laughs> that sort of stuff. Yeah. Like, do you, know, do you know when he turned up to that honeymoon suite in India? And he's I was like, fucking disgusted. This. There's, a, there's, a, there's a fucking bucket of paint in the room. <laughs> Just, I love dry, I love dry bloke humour. I think that's why I want more dads on the show. Because sometimes, like, I think some people are, some people would be fucking brilliant at a podcast and they, do you know what? Maybe they'd never thought, think, thought about doing it. Yeah. I never thought we would be doing as much as we are. Why? Uh, because... To be fair, out of all the people that I know, that I have known, I would never have put you on the, a list to do a podcast with when we started 99 uh, uh, episodes ago. Absolutely fear, no way. I guess... <laughs> The fear of doing something for me, and like I always say that you never know what you never know what you're doing until you put yourself out there, and you don't want to put yourself out there and go people think I'm a dickhead for doing it. And, oh, because in the first few episodes, I was a bit like, oh god. First, you're gonna get the family. Your family are gonna listen to it and see it and the posts and stuff, <laughs> and you like, and you just think, fuck them, fuck them, do it. You want to do it? Fucking do it. Enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. But, and I've. Like, <clears throat> I've never, re- I've never regretted an episode that we've done. Like some stuff we've said, and we've said, "Listen, let's hang five on that." Do you know what I mean? Let's just put it, let's put that to bed. Cut that bit but, out. <laughs> like, I, I, for me, again, it, it's as simple as if we, if we, me, you went right down. Not that we would, but if we went down the pub right now, it'd be the same shit that you're talking. Do you know what I mean? Well, don't forget when we used to meet up with Cost in Costa. Half the time. I, We'd be chatting non-stop about something really deep involved in it. And you always say, oh, that could have been an episode. <laughs> I know. He, some <laughs> people nice. don't realise, especially our listeners, is that some of our best episodes have probably never been recorded. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? No, and sometimes probably for the better. <laughs> and that's like, oh, yeah. You know. But then, do you know what I mean? Some of the fucking... Yeah, way back when, some of the funniest nights we used to have when we used to work together and we used to fucking sit and watch movies and fucking order takeaways... <laughs> Like, they, we used to have some of the fucking funniest of times. I know, I know. And then you just think that's, that's just part of life. It's just part of your journey. And I love that. It's it, fucking part of your journey. And who'd have thought I would change my uh, my ways and think that Die Hard is a Christmas film, eh? Hey, that wouldn't have been fucking, without you. Yeah, it is a Christmas movie. Fucking Christmas Eve Christmas out, movie. <laughs> like, and we'll be discussing that same shit next year at Christmas. We will do. We will do, and um, I can't find um, it on Disney again. <laughs> and you guests that have heard this story about Die Hard and how we like Christmas, you'll fucking enjoy it, right? Yeah. But yeah, I'm, so my, one of my big things, I want to get more I want to get more guests on that are just real, just real dads. Day in, day out, bread and butter dads. Do you know what I mean? Fucking talking See, about fucking... I know a lot of people, and I speak to a lot of people, but they're not in the, not necessarily the public eye, but they don't do, how do I put this? I know a lot of people in the ghost industry that put videos out, they go on podcasts, they go to events. So they're out in the public all the time, meeting people, new people, people they don't know. They sort of know the game, but I also know a lot of people that would be good at doing stuff like that, but they've never done it. And for them to come on a podcast and talk about their life, a lot of people are scared to do it. Like you say, family going to watch it. They're going to be truthful. They're going to maybe say something that might get them in trouble with somebody. They're not sure. And I think... Yeah, but, you know, it... That's until you've done people. it. Listen, I know guys. What you're saying, yeah. Mickey's very good at editing. So if you're not happy with something, just say the word stop, say cut that bit, cut and it's that gone. Bit out. I, I we remember do that. that. Because uh, one, sometimes... One bit I do regret, though, is when we filmed... Was it 18 with Ryan? The first time with Ryan. And he told us about Katie Price's house. And some of the stuff he told me, I had to cut it out because I couldn't have that released about what she was doing. And it's like, fuck's sake. Yes. It's like, that, that never went to air. You know. But you do, though. And the thing is, right... I hate the fact now that you can post something and be perceived 
straight away as do you know what I mean? But yet, it's general shit that you're talking all the time. Is it because it's not heard? Is it because you're having a conversation with mates and it's like probably? But then, yeah, it's not do you know what I mean? You can you can be having a conversation with all your mates, and then one of your mates is a fucking snitch. And do you know what I mean? I'm not saying you, you're saying doing anything bad by the way before you fucking start on people, but like, do you know what I mean? You could be fucking. You could go home after a couple of beers and drive home. Not that you should do that either, but your mates would be fucking snitching on you. Yeah, yeah. Just, and the police you know what I mean? coming. Yeah. Yeah, and that, yeah. Don't drink and drive. It's fucking stupid. Or well, just don't drink at all. We don't drink. We're not drinkers. Yeah. Um, what was going to say? What was going to say? I want to talk about it quickly before. AI, what are your thoughts? No idea. I think it's Artificial dangerous. Intelligence. Dangerous. I seen, so there's a, I've seen a lot, I've seen a lot of stuff. Um, especially on the news today about how people are just confused that, that obviously I could get, I could, you've got so much footage of me. If you wanted to, you could take me right now, Wait. put me on. <laughs> Sorry. Dirty oh, boy. <laughs> such a fun, man. You're such a fan. <laughs> you could Ooh. take me right now in, in my form, edit me, and you could put me on a podcast, and you could literally just type all the shit that I'm saying. Yeah, and it's not good be... software, but that is possible. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, but somebody could do that. Somebody can take you. Somebody can basically use your identity for lots of things. I think it's very dangerous. I don't think they should do it. Also, these robots. You've seen these robots that can play football, and they can do all this stuff. They're going to fucking take over, you know. It's going to be iRobot all over again. And we're going to see... I have this. Fucking joke. I, so let, let's just take it back a notch. I had this at the weekend. So I was an idiot. I went to Asda on a Saturday, do my food shop, took my daughter. I always put her inside the trolley and then I pile all the food on top of her. Yeah. And she, she organises everything. Anyway, <laughs> we went at two o'clock on a Saturday. Idiots. Fucking idiots. We know. <clears throat> anyway, big as the went to the tills, full trolley, and there was there was two tills open. The entire lane, the entire lane of about twenty tills, all closed. The shop is heaving. Okay. They've got a big they've got a scan yourself trolley and then they've got a self checkout for trolley and baskets. Yeah. And I went to the till, went to the uh Ooh. Went oh, to the aisle. Here we go. Fucking... So went to the aisle, started to unload, and the woman went. The woman went. I'm closing now. I went. There's there's no sign out. And she went. No, I'm closing now. I was just doing the last one. Then I was going to put the sign out. I said, Yeah, but your signs are not out. I said, There's no tills open. There's only that one person there. She said, No, no, no everyone has to go to self scan. And I just, I lost it. I was like, do you not realize that you're going to fucking lose your job to those people, to those robots? Yeah, I was like, yeah. you're, tell you're telling me that I should go to sales scan because you don't want to keep the till open. I said, it'll literally take you five minutes to just ring me through. No, no, you need to go to sales scan. I was like, you do realize you're going to be out of a job one day because you're, you basically sound like you don't want to do it because you'd rather everyone go and queue at these self checkout. I didn't ask for a job at Asda. I didn't ask for a job. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Otherwise, start giving me staff discount. Because honestly, I uh, leave yeah, work. Yeah. When you scan your own shopping, yeah. I, don't I scan it. I bag it. I scan it and bag it myself. I walk around the shop and get it all for myself. Like soon, people are going. There's going to be no need for staff. You just should, you should get rid of all the tills then. Just have the staff walking around the shop. I'm sure there's, an, there's an Amazon store somewhere in the world. That you go London, in I've been to it. And you don't, there's it. no staff. You just, you just put it in we your trolley to, and walk out. And it knows, all the cameras are watching, knowing what you've put in. And you get we a went to one in, We went to one in Hammersmith. Yeah. Okay. A Amazon, Amazon supermarket. You walk in, pick up the basket, pick up what you want, walk out, job done. No one's in there. There's only, the only person in there is a security guard in the gate. That's not the future. It looks good. And, oh, technology. But it's going to fuck you up. Did you know you can get, you know, you get a SIM card for your phone 
on like EEO2 and all that. Apparently, you can get eSIMs now. You don't yeah, have that's to... ages ago. eSIMs are the new thing, yeah. They're shit. Because I know someone who's trying to cancel one, and they don't know if it's worked, because it it's not physical. They've put their other SIM in the car, their new contract with a different company, and they've got two fucking networks on their phone. And you know at the top it says EE, whatever. This is, it's got two on there. One under another. And it's like, what the fuck? What's an eSIM? Never heard of that. You could lose so much through Crazy. artificial intelligence or robots. You could lose a lot of... People could lose a lot of jobs. Fuck like, can yeah. you imagine... It, can you imagine if you say, for example, you just wanted to go and get a new, you wanted to get a new tire on your car, and all, all you had to do was go for a drive-through, and a ramp would pick you up, machines would take your wheel off, take the tire off, put a new tire on, perfect, back, and you scan your card at the end. Awesome. No talking to, no talking to Dirty Dave in the greasy office, yeah. in the uh, the calendar with the tits out and the two tires. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, but then it's. People, you can get, like, you can go on, right? So you can go on like ChatGBT or Ask AI or all these things, right? And you can go on and say, write me a movie about bank robbery based in New York. It would write you one of the fucking top movies that you'd want to watch. So your kids Full are doing that for their schoolwork, aren't they? Easy. I yeah. wish it was bad. Thinking, thinking about it now, when I put, I put a lot of stuff on eBay at the moment trying to make money, and you put like a couple of lines into the description of your your item that you're selling, and then it then you click on use eBay AI. So you click on it, and it tells you a fucking story about your product. So like, how do you know? And I leave it on there. So I've been using AI as well. It's fucking brilliant. You do though, but exactly. You, exactly. So I you're saying it's dangerous on one hand, and you're I saying I didn't even, thinking about no, it. I use it already. It's populating all my stuff on eBay for me. It's making it sound better than it is. It is, like you can, you could put your CV into AI. Oh, right? wow. yeah, you, I'll, be well, I'll be well good. <laughs> it's not about it being good though. It's about it. it basically, what it descriptive is is it adds everything that you're not putting into it. Yeah, yeah. Like, and these are free services. These are not. You're not paying for these, and I want to know why you're not paying for these. You systems. should be paying for them. Yeah. Surely something like that is worth money mm. why at the moment is it free get you sucked in and hooked until they do something i always like think like you know, fucking price up it's like platforms that are free like like whatsapp for example whatsapp always been free on iphone wasn't always android used to pay no. android just pay yeah like one pound a year or whatever how many people skip messenger skip messages skip stuff just to go to what's happened do you ever switch platforms of where you talk to people yeah all the time sometimes i talk to the same person on three different platforms and it's like well really i've always spoke to you we've always whatsapp that's just our thing i'm now i think i'm a tele but i'm a ringer i ring people i fucking i can't do fucking texting all the time yeah I you just constant... and you I'm you have a text you. message you're fucking you're moody as fuck Oh, Mickey, I'm sorry, mate. I can't film tonight. I've got this going on. Okay. <laughs> well, what do you I don't... It's <laughs> sorry, mate. You, honestly, you might as well be a woman. You might as well put fine, dot, 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 dot. <laughs> or, or K. K, yeah. Oh, oh you're going to K me. Going to K oh. <laughs> you might as well... And then after we've done that conversation, you might as well go and put a message, Facebook post out, going, I'm pissed off. Can't be bothered with it. <laughs> That's I mean. I'll hey, message you, hun. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, people, thanks for joining us on another week of 99 episodes of Dads, Lads, and Kebabs. Thanks for joining us. We love you guys. We just want more of it. We want more. We want to give you more. We want to give you, the listeners, what you want to hear. Yeah. And hopefully, we're going to have a bit, of a bit of a surprise, a bit of a revamp. We're going to add some things, take some things, bring some things back. But thanks for joining us, guys, this week. Been awesome. Watch out for the live of episode 100 coming soon. Whoop, 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 whoop. Yeah, we'll let you know on all platforms when it is available. Look out for social media. What day, what time. We want you to join in if you want. You know, get on the show. Talk some shit for five minutes with us. 
Absolutely. Give us some questions listen. live. It's, it's going to be awesome. According to AI, we have been in The Guardian, The Independent, and one of Apple Podcast's top shows. So, who knows? Maybe they predict in the future. And there's three of us. <laughs> That's a third one. Maybe it's Janet. She's always in the background there, so maybe it's, she's included. Guys, it's been emotional. <laughs> now it's time. Wait, you guys wait. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the show. There you go. <laughs> you can do it now. Deuces. Peace out, motherfuckers. Fuck off. <laughs> you fucked that off. up.